What you're seeing here is the home of an insect. This is a caddisfly casing made by an insect built up out of tiny particles, some plant material with some blue bits included, which turn out to be microplastic. Microplastic all the way from the 80s. These casings are important because they tell a bit of our history and the history of this pollutant microplastic that's now everywhere. But, but how did it all start? When did we first see microplastic in, in, in fresh water? Turns out way earlier than we started measuring it. So here it is, a casing made by a caddisfly. And this actually is the very first caddisfly that includes plastic pollution, small bits of microplastics in the house of a small insect. This is Alka Florian Heemstra. He's been studying casings left behind by caddisflies, small moth-like flying insects whose larvae live underwater and can create the most amazing protective structures. These tiny tubes are made up of bits of sand, plant, and basically whatever a caddisfly larva has access to. And just a few years ago, actually, the first report came in of a caddisfly casing, which was found to include microplastic. Microplastics are tiny fragments of plastic that come from human rubbish. The term was coined in 2004, and since then, they've been discovered in a lot of surprising places. At the wildest places you can nowadays find microplastics. So they've been found in our, in our brains, they've been found in our blood, in our heart. It's difficult to escape microplastics. These microplastics contain potentially harmful chemicals and have been found to accumulate in marine life. It's estimated that our oceans contain trillions of tiny particles of microplastic. But a lot less is known about its presence in freshwater, where caddisfly larvae live. We knew about plastic and caddisfly casings for just a few years. It's a very, fairly recent discovery. But I just kept thinking, maybe, maybe this has been happening for, for a way longer period already. And we just didn't notice. And as I work in a, a natural history museum, you can actually go back in time, go into our natural history collection and look at casings from, from long ago. So together with my student, Isabel van der Velde, we went through the whole Kennisfly collection here. So we had hundreds of drawers. So we went by every drawer, every drawer, and every juvenile with a casing we encountered. We put it under a microscope and inspected if we could find any particles which seemed strange, which had like bright colors. And eventually we found one actually going way back in time, all the way to the early 70s. These bright yellow particles turned out to contain elements like titanium, chlorine and lead, all additives in plastic. Finding them in this casing from 1971 and others from the 1980s pushes back our understanding of microplastics in freshwater environments. These caddisflies were not found in heavily polluted urban places. These were found according to the labels, in, in very natural areas, so at, at, at the source of these very small Dutch creeks. While it's not yet clear what the impact of microplastics on freshwater is, Alka Florian thinks their prevalence is potentially alarming. So there's not much known about microplastics and the effects, actually, of microplastics. So it's easy to say, uh, we found a microplastic, but it's difficult to say, how does this microplastic affect animals? Um, but it's everywhere, and I, I don't think that's a good sign. So, yes, finding microplastics in caddisfly casings decades ago is a pretty cool discovery. It's also quite a sad discovery, because it shows that microplastics have been impacting our freshwater life for at least 50 years. I really see these caddisflies as, as colleagues who were monitoring microplastic before we humans figured out that they're actually there.